This is going to be a very controversial topic that I'm going to talk about. So what that means is that YT is probably going to censor this video. In fact, I will be shocked if it even gets more than 40 views for a channel that has over 9,300 subscribers. And if you guys are even able to hit the like button or even leave comments because of the nature of what we're going to be talking about here. So if you could... Please try and share this video around as much as you can to help me spread the word about what's going on in Indiana. All that being said, we're still going to get into our usual intro here, guys. If you could, please like this video, share it, hit the bell, subscribe, or the glasses because I'm blind. So, Indiana's Republican governor, Eric Holcomb, has proven that he dislikes women very much, especially women in athletics. Now, why on earth would Eric Holcomb dislike these women so much? Well, I can tell you this. He's decided to play politics. When it comes to a certain bill that has floated around across many states, in fact, Indiana would have become the 13th state to pass this legislation. However, thanks to Holcomb, this did not come to pass. This is also very similar to Utah Republican Governor Spencer Cox, who I talked about in a video about a month or two ago when similar legislation was brought to his desk, and it was also vetoed. And that is simply protecting female sports. And we are used to Democrat governors talking about how they won't do anything to do this. But when Republicans get involved into this, or really rhinos, because that's what they are. And I have talked about Eric Holcomb before many times. Many controversial things that he has tried to pass into law or restrictions as it came to the cuckoo and the jibbity jab jabs and the boosty boosts and all that good stuff. And now you have this. You have the Republican legislature overwhelmingly pass this piece of legislation that would say that, hey, Guess what? Here's a, here's a wild idea. If you're a male and you want to play sports, you play on the male team. If you're a female and you want to play sports, you play on the female's team. Now, 30 years ago, 20 years ago even, this would be common sense. But of course, we all now live in the New World Order, so... None of this makes any sense. Where everything is turned completely upside down, the devil has come in and has completely twisted everything around because that's what he does. Remember, everything that you see happening, as it especially relates to this subject, this is not so much an attack against you. This is an attack against God because it's his creation. It's how he made us. M and F. And forgive me if I'm speaking a little in code or I'm kind of, you know, working around things. You got to read between the lines when it comes to this because YT will still find ways to try and, you know, you know, help prevent this video from going anywhere. So what was Holcomb's reason for the legislation and using the veto power. I'll talk about that in a second, guys. But first, let me mention, if you were able to make a generous donation here to my ministry to help support what I do, boy, I could really use it because YT ain't going to support me in any way. I am demonetized here. But if you guys enjoy my daily content, talking about end-time Bible prophecy headlines, and you would like to help support me in what I do, you can do that over on PayPal. The link is down below. Or you can sign up on Patreon. When you do that, you get access to my bonus content. I also include the links of the YT videos there so you get all alerts when new content arrives because they are not going to let you guys know when the majority of these videos first come out. It's the way it goes now. But on Patreon, as a perk, you can find out every time the new content comes out. Plus, you can leave your comments there 100% censorship-free behind the paywall. You can say whatever you want there without anybody having to worry about it getting taken down. Plus, you can send me direct messages and then, hey, for a backup, I'm also on Rumble. These videos will go up there as well. You guys can make sure you sub to that channel. All the links down below. Big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. When the legislation hit Holcomb's desk on Monday, he sent a letter back to 
Indiana's uh, House Speaker, Republican House Speaker, who was one of the co-sponsors of this bill, and said that he was concerned about how this would basically be implemented and that there was really nothing in the legislation that really even said how this would even be worked out, but also brought up the fact that there hasn't been any males in Indiana sports throughout high school and, and you know, in elementary that have come forward and said that they have wanted to play on the, on the women's teams. So he looks at this as a non-issue, but also he says he already has the trust and confidence in the schools to already exercise what he calls fairness in sports, whatever that means. So you're putting your faith and your confidence in the schools, Eric Holcomb? Really? Have you seen what these schools are doing? What they're capable of? And who's to say if this is even 100% true with what he's saying? If they haven't had an actual male who's wanted to play on a female's team. The bottom line is this. This is common sense legislation. And as a Republican, you would expect that you would stick up for females in your state. Many of them who voted for you. But instead of doing that, he wants to play politics, beat around the bush, say, oh, wait, no, this isn't even a problem. I mean, this isn't even clear in the wording of the bill and everything like that. No, no. He wants to curry favor with the rainbow community. Show that he's in the middle, in the center of things, really. And again, this is exactly what Spencer Cox, the governor of Utah, did, Republican governor, when that legislation was brought to his desk. So look, you're seeing the rhinos, who they are. They're not hiding it anymore. Should be pretty easy to see who you should vote out when that time comes. Well, you know, if you have an even playing field, of course, and there's nothing nefarious going on, which I'm sure there wouldn't be. But it's a slap in the face to all women who play sports in the state of Indiana, the Hoosier State. If you ask me, that's my opinion. That's what exactly what this is. And it's sad that we even have to have discussions like this. I'm even doing a video about this. But it shows you where we are right now in terms of the end times and the fact that we are getting so close to the return of Christ. Now, one thing that's been brought up too is, is there any possibility here of an override? from the Indiana legislature. Uh, I am not 100% sure if they have a two-thirds majority, which is what they would need to override the veto here. Now, if they do, and as I was kind of going through this, this news story and everything like that, I didn't see anything that clearly showed that they have the majority, but they might. Now, I hope they do. If they do, then I would hope that they would use this veto uh, and go ahead and you know basically stick it to Holcomb as it comes to this. Uh, but if they don't, look, he will be held accountable. And by the way, not just politically, but he will be held accountable by God because he is choosing not to protect these women when he clearly has the ability to do so. And trust me, any price that he may or may not pay at the polls when it comes to his position as governor will pale in comparison to what judgment will be before him when he stands behind God and has to give an account of his life, how he governed his state, and if he did it according to the word of God or not. Something for everybody to really think about as we continue to go forward. But, you know, God's will is that everybody should know this, is that none should perish, but that all should come to a place of repentance. Jesus is coming soon, but there is still time for people to accept Christ into their life as their Lord and Savior. And if that's you, if you're watching this video right now and you've yet to do that, I would love to lead you in a prayer right now to get you to accept the Lord. First thing that you want to do right off the top is to acknowledge that you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. Let me tell you the good news, though. God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. He died and he rose again for you and me. He paid that cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. And that means to turn from your sin. It doesn't just mean say you're sorry, go right back out into those things again and as if you never really meant any of it. No, you have to turn from those things which are not of the word of God. But if you humbly go before the Lord and you ask him to forgive you, he will in fact wipe that sin away. The Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. 
The Bible says that those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. I pray you make that decision today. I will have more on this for you guys down below. You can let me know your thoughts. Don't forget the links to donate to our ministry are there as well. It is a great blessing if you could help us out. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.